Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gade. Welcome to today. Is it an amazing day? Oh my goodness, I'm getting tongue tied. It is an amazing day. Amen. Say that to yourself and not only say it, but believe it in your heart and always hope against hope. That is one of my favorite things. Romans 5 5 and verses through 10. Hoping against hope, where Father Abraham hoped against hope. And we see later on that it was accounted unto him as righteousness. Amen. So as you join in today, be super hopeful and expectant. God is going to bless you and he's going to encourage you and strengthen you this week. Amen. Hey, Stephanie, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Oh my goodness. And I see Kim Mitchell. There are my Winfield crew where I used to go minister in Winfield all the time. And Stephanie and Kim Mitchell are from that area. I miss you all so much. And I know Debbie will join in later. Debbie Hawkins, and she's from that area as well. Thank you, Kimberly. God bless. So we're going to look at today in the possibility of what God is doing in your life. He is the God of the impossible. Thank you, Stephanie. Oh my goodness. Right now I'm still reading uh, Matter and Time. Matter and Memory, sorry, Matter and Memory by, by Henri Bergson. And I've got that in the new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease. And just to let you know, I've put a promotional uh, thing about the book. That is not the actual cover. The actual cover is an, art, an artistic match with Mindfulness, Mind of Christ. And that book. But I put out a promo just to get everybody anticipating the book coming out in 2024. And all I can say is get ready. And so when we look at the power of possibility, you know, God is the God of the impossible. And with God, all things are possible. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. He is able, Ephesians 3.20, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or imagine, okay, according to the power and operation inside of us of his love, his might, his Holy Spirit, of the revealing of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Hey, Lottie, I love you. So good to have you on here. And so we're going to be looking at the God of the impossible, making it possible. Okay. And the limiting factor in this whole equation, okay, is you and I. That's a limiting factor. God's not limited. We limit God. Be it unto you according to your faith. Understand that the most powerful weapon we have in this earth is our intention, which for us as Christians is God intention. And the enemy tries to distract us from what God has purposed us to do. He tries to bring things in our peripheral view that, you know, make us look to the side. And that's a reflexive response that when something comes in the peripheral, our eyes follow, you know, when you go to the doctor and you get eye examinations and they always see if you're going to follow their eye, your, their finger, they're checking many things, but they're also looking at your peripheral view. And one of the things that God created us as humans is, oh, thank you, Lottie, is you know, when something comes into our view that we can have laser focus to not be distracted, to put our eyes over there and what is in our peripheral view. We need to have almost tunnel vision to some regard, which can be a strength when we're going into the call of Christ in relation to keeping our eyes single where our mind stays sound. So I want to just introduce this little tidbit that you're going to see in chapter three of the forbidden fruit, which I'm finishing today and starting chapter four. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter three is over 80 pages. So it's two chapters in one and I'm starting chapter four today and I'm so super excited and I know that it will just be increasing with intensity as I get closer to the end of the book and it will come out in 2024. And so one of the things that I want to bring to your consideration that you don't even realize, you know, because our own hearts are deceitful, we don't realize what's in the subconscious. And as I re reveal in the book, Mindfulness, the Mind of Christ, which get it before you read 
the forbidden fruit. It is the prequel. It is better to read that. So you go into the forbidden fruit where I bring in mindfulness, the mind of Christ and about the mind and the body connection. Romans 12, one, the consecrated body, Romans 12, two, the transformed mind. And I'm still going into the G protein coupled receptor, referring to that where your perception and your behavior is operative from your body. So largely the subconscious is in the body, but because we just think from the mind down to the body, we think that the subconscious is in the mind and it's largely in the body. Like a tree, an oak tree, its roots go far and wide, about three to four times the circumference of the crown of the tree. And so the crown of the tree is the farthest tips of the leaves on the outside and the measuring around, kind of like the crown of the head. But you don't see the roots to the oak tree that are three to four times larger than the crown. And so it's the same thing with our sub subconscious. The subconscious is largely in the body where Holy Spirit is, your spirit is, and your soul is, okay? And so all of that is in the temple and that information is brought to the upstairs, to the mind, like the crown of the head, those roots of the subconscious go deep. And you don't realize that your perception is all from your, your body, okay? And that's why a lot of people are trying to get delivered and they're get, get, trying to get delivered from the head down to the body and it doesn't work because you get delivered from the body up to the mind. Romans 12, one, the consecrated body. Romans 12, two, the transformed mind. And I reveal some of those supernatural deliverances and bring explanation to it in mindfulness, mind of Christ. But you're gonna see more in the forbidden fruit and you're gonna see more in relation to the descriptiveness of my supernatural deliverances that defy science and absolutely just whew, the power of the kingdom of heaven. And listen, saints of God, the power of the kingdom of heaven is the message that we have been given the good news as Jesus sent the disciples. He sent the disciples saying, preach the kingdom of God, preach the kingdom of God. And he's referring to the kingdom of heaven. That was his message from the beginning. Good morning, Monica, is the kingdom of heaven is near and we are limited. And so, I'm going to bring in an explanation in relation to your perception and your behavior as I talk about the G protein coupled receptor, which is a receptor in which are hundreds on every cell storing memories. And they're an outside external receptor that are hit largely unpacking memories with neuropeptides or frequencies. And it unpacks and triggers that receptor and so memories start coming out of that receptor. And that's what you and I know as our emotions. Okay, your emotions are memories that are unpacking inside of your body and are driving your perception. They're driving your behavior. And so I explain in Mindfulness Mind of Christ how we're John 15 2 pruned of those memories of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Good morning, Marguerite. And so it has no influence on us because it is the formation. It is the form, the identity of the world. And even when we think that we're feeling good, if it is of the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, good and evil, that good can be a deceptiveness. And that's why Paul the apostle said, I choose to know nothing except for Christ Jesus and him crucified. And 1 Corinthians 2 is unpacked in a lot of my books, but especially Mindfulness, the Mind of Christ, that whole chapter, okay? And I talk about the Mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2, 16. But 1 Corinthians 2 is a core chapter to our Christian walk. It is a foundational chapter. And it is about knowing Christ and Him crucified so that we only know what the Holy Spirit is showing us from the Father. And as the Father discloses what he wants us to do, his will in this earth, that we walk in obedience. We're not doing sacrifices. We're not suffering. We're doing it in joy. We're obeying in joy. And that is being led by the Spirit, showing that we are the children of God. Amen. And so I want to get into this one concept today of how 
it is possible to limit God by the perception of your subconscious in your body that is projecting things of your past that have made you feel like a failure or less than. Those are insecurities, inferiorities, in which we react, okay? And so this is something to start out this week that is absolutely gonna bless you. It's gonna give you a principle. It's gonna give you a tool. You can immediately apply it. And also, if you haven't seen the Bittersweet Taste Test in the book, Mindfulness, Mind of Christ, which has only been revealed by the Holy Spirit and the scientific evidence is in the book and all of those that are doing it are getting beyond phenomenal results as it aids as a natural supplementation in the consecration of the body, in other words, deliverance. And so the bittersweet taste test I talk about is from Isaiah 7, 14 and 15, that there shall be one born of a virgin and his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us, and he shall be raised on butter and honey until he knows the difference to choose the good and to refuse the evil. And so verse 15 is talking about Messiah, Jesus Christ, being raised on butter and honey. And that word butter there is curdled milk and it's the bitter taste. And so the bittersweet taste test, and I tell people to check with your doctors, okay, uh, in relation to whether or not you should do it. But it is just a about a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar diluted with water, about a tablespoon of water. Drink it, that tastes bad, and then dip your spoon, dip a spoon in honey and dab it and get it and say that tastes good. And those particular taste buds, those two taste buds hit the G protein coupled receptor in your body, okay? And I explain in chapter nine and chapter six, the opening of the senses, not on your head, but the opening of the senses in your body and also in relation to how that particular uh, taste bud in your body regulates your organs and it aids in your body getting into deliverance, okay? Good morning, Suzanne. Hey, Susie. And so let me just end with this concept a little bit, bringing in Henri Bergson, 18th century philosopher. And again, I'm referring to matter and memory it is a very hard read, okay? It is very philosophical, <clears throat> and he is beyond brilliant and had a debate with Einstein, and it's so funny because in chapter four, I bring in Einstein in the fourth dimension, which I actually wrote on extensively in 2014 for God's Firewall. School of the Prophets, session 28, okay? And so, I'm gonna bring in this concept of how you're probably, probably limiting God because you're extrapolating interpretation from all of that around you with what interests you. And this is what you have to realize. So just breathe. Let's just do three deep breaths. Inhale, long, exhale, long. Let's do two more. We're gonna start this morning out right. Inhale, long, exhale, one more. Inhale, exhale. Thank you, Lord. So let's look at this concept, okay? I wanna bring it to you one more time that you're, I get into deeper in the forbidden fruit, the spiritual disease in chapter three, revival intention, which is all about intent. It is over 80 pages. That is all about your intention and the power of your God-given intent that causes you to remain in revival, okay? So this is what little tidbit I'm gonna give you today. Again, hear this one more time and probably watch this video two or three times. It doesn't hurt. Subscribe to my YouTube channel as well and listen to it over and over. So here it is one more time. <clears throat> you extrapolate the meaning of that which is around you based on what interests you, okay? Whew. Just say, whew, and breathe out, whew. So funny, just like carrying the groceries up all these flights of stairs, we live at the very top. I told Rich when we carry, because we have no elevator, I said, when you drop the groceries on the ground in the apartment, Rich, you gotta say, 
woof, and let out that breath. That's what's happening as God is bringing understanding about your subconscious and he's bringing it up to the mind. There is a release of understanding as what is in the temple comes up to the apartment to bring food, to bring truth. So where do we see this? Second Corinthians 3.18, it says that we with an unveiled face as we behold the glory of God, and that word glory broken down, doxa, comes from dokia, which means opinions and thoughts are being transformed into that icon, that image from one degree of glory to another is by the Spirit of the Lord. And so to the degree that we perceive God's glory inside of us is the measure to which we it project outside of us onto that which is around us, all the other images, and not only project, but we extrapolate like a perfume. Amen, Susie. Y'all just say, woof, drop the groceries and get ready to take the food in of what you got from the grocery store, from the word, amen. Woof. So listen to this one more time. That which interests you, which is how you perceive yourself. Hey, friend, I love you, Sherry. Yes, Dinya, amen. That which interests you, that which serves you. Ding, 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 ding. It's not only what you're going to project into your environment, but what you're going to extrapolate, or can I say interpret, of that which is around you. You're going to interpret others. You're going to interpret your circumstances. You're going to interpret your job. You're going to interpret your blessings. Or can I say, you're going to interpret <clears throat> things that even to the negative, to where you don't see the blessings based on what is inside of you. And so, if you are focused on the world, you're going to be self-seeking. And again, don't be deceived because sometimes that good feeling you feel might be from the tree of the knowledge of good, I feel good and not bad, and you will misinterpret it because you feel good and you will ascribe to it God. What? Hello, yes. You always have to, and that's where the world becomes your fix, your drug to feel good by extrapolating and interpreting everything around you for your self-serving purposes that will help you out. That is not how Jesus was. Jesus brought the message of the kingdom of heaven, and that was God's purpose, and he was a servant. He took the lowest position, which is why God exalted him above everything, Philippians 2, because he was the most humble, okay? And so that's why Jesus told the disciples in Luke 22 that the greatest among you is a servant. Why? Because a servant can project the image of interest of his master, her master, on all that which is around them and it interpret, extrapolate meaning from that. So let's look at it this way. When you are anxious, when you're frustrated, you're focused on the world and everything that interests you is to help you out. And that is desperation. It comes in relationships, it comes in provision, it comes in circumstances where you might think, oh my goodness, I'm cursed. Or you might think, oh, I'm never gonna be healed. I'm always gonna have this issue with my soul. But that is because you're focused on the world and it's self-serving. And so you're going to extrapolate things which interest you of, I need to feel good. I need my fix. And you're never going to get it from the world, okay? You're only going to know who you are from God. And so in those instances of your insecurities, you have to realize and just breathe and say, oh my goodness, I'm anxious. I am frustrated, I'm feeling desperate, I'm feeling less than, I, I'm, I might even be feeling like a failure or feeling cursed, and that is all extrapolated from the world. 
And so I'm looking to protect self. And then you've got to get under the banner of God's love. Song of Solomon 2, 4, the banqueting house of God's love where his banner over you is love. And you have to keep your eyes on things above and the fact that God loves you. And as I've been telling all of my individual clients, say the Lord's prayer. So they're doing the bittersweet taste test. When they do the bittersweet taste test, they're saying the Lord's prayer. And I'm telling you, the Lord's Prayer is going to be so unpacked in this new book in chapter 4 that it is absolutely going to blow your mind. Praise God, Suzanne. It is absolutely going to blow your mind because we limit the God of the impossible when everything that we're extrapolating from our environment is based on self-interest and serving ourselves. We limit God and God is the God of the impossible as we keep our eyes on things above and we look to be his servant. We are only servant and I'm going to end with a Hebrew word for servant, which is Ebed, Ebed. And it's composed of Ayin, Bet, and Delet, the three ancient Hebrew letters, Ayin, Bet, and Delet. And Ayin is the ancient symbol of an ah, A, A, Y, I, N. And it means to see, to know, to experience. Bet is the ancient symbol of a tent, which looks like a tent. And I can't put my other hand up right now. It looks like this, a tent, okay? And it means tent, house, household, family, and then a uh, Delet is a door, and it means to enter in pathway. And so the word picture of servant is one who sees and experiences the door and enters into the house. That's what Joshua did as Moses was inside the tabernacle in the wilderness, the tent of tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Joseph, uh, 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 Joshua stayed outside the tent, but he heard everything going on in that tent and he wanted to enter. And God told Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 1, as I was with Moses, my servant Moses, Ebed, so will I be with you. And what I love about Joshua, it says in Joshua 1, 1, Joshua the son of Nun, N-U-N, and that word in Hebrew is perpetuity. In other words, eternity. Joshua, who was a prototype of Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Son of God of eternity. That's our focus. We have to be eternity focused on eternity time. And if you haven't seen my eternity time video, watch it. We have to be focused on eternity as it is in heaven, heaven's plans on this earth. And when you do, all I can say is watch out. There is the infinite, the impossible is made possible. Amen. So just breathe, say, Whew, carry up the food from the store house of God's word in your members and let it come to your mind and bring transformation. God bless you. I love you.